All right, we are here at the front of the trailer for part two of my solar panel setup. Uh, I have some hacks for you today that will make your life a bit easier for monitoring your solar panels, for monitoring the wiring that's going on in your trailer. Um, I've got the solar charge controller right here, which is the, the basic one that comes from the Harbor Freight solar panel setup. Uh, I'm gonna be going over uh, the management of your wires a little bit, um, some safety items, and just kind of a, a basic generic overview of the wiring in here so that you can stay safe and have a really good solar setup for your trailer. So let's go check it out. And there you have the generic charge controller. One thing that I did with mine that's a little bit different, you'll see here are the brackets. And I found that on both sides, right here at the middle where the case splits, um, I just put some self-tapping screws through there and was able to um, not hit any electrical components on the inside. Now, real quick, when you drill holes in the side of that, it will leave little shavings on the inside. If you're going to do this same thing, putting a hole in the side of your charge controller with those self-tapping screws, take it apart. Seriously, take the case apart and get those uh, little shavings that the self-tapping screw creates get it out of there because if you're bouncing down the road and whatever the case may be and those shavings get up on the circuit board or something you totally destroy your charge controller with that one little cleanup item that wasn't completed so just as a little side note make sure that gets done too all right fuses 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 right now i got some 15 amp fuses that are in my distribution block for the um for the source, all right? This is where all my my charge controller and my batteries connect to. So, you may be looking at this one. This one is a five amp fuse. That goes to my charge controller. Uh, previous video, I need to see if they even make a four amp fuse to match the charge controller up top. Um, I've had this one blow before. Me being stupid and trying to move some things around, I have blown this fuse before and it has saved my charge controller. Well, more or less, because I've it's got a four amp fuse in it but just like i predicted in a previous video this one blew first be even though it was a five amp this five amp fuse blew first before that four amp fuse blew in the charge controller um the other half to it here is my grounding block um this is basically a generic uh, household uh, grounding bar and what i've done here to make sure my connections are secure is i've used round um can't think of the name of them right off the top of my head but the the round ones on the end of my wire and this little screw here goes right through it so that these won't come off bouncing down the road um, i've got it on both sides into the subframe of the trailer and uh, so this provides my grounding to everything else and i've also got items um, grounded directly to the the subframe of the trailer in other spots too so this is not the only grounding spot, but it is a, a one of the main ones for like the lighting and whatnot uh, throughout the trailer. All right, now here is where we've got a little bit of a split between the trailer and the truck coming up from this fuse down here. This is the switch for trailer battery power, and this is the switch from the truck power. So if at any time I needed to, say, pull some bad battery power from the truck or if I had to pull the batteries completely out for some reason, whatever the case may be, um, I can just turn this one off, turn this one back on. I'm going to get some labels made to throw on there. I just don't have any on there yet. And uh, I'm going to shift back down here a little bit. This is just the distribution block for uh, all the accessory power here. Um, these two here go over to uh, the back of the trailer to the, the Wii and the, the monitor that's over there the lights that go up top and some other accessories so and with that i want to show you my cable labels wherever they went so with that i'm just going to take a second here to talk about cable labels um i can't find the one that i i just had like five minutes ago but oh well um there's a bunch of different kinds of cable labels that you can put on your wires uh, now, my background in computer networking, we use these all the time. Uh, 
a common type is a sticky label. So you write your description on the, the white part and then it wraps around the cable onto itself of a clear part so that it, it covers and protects the ink so it doesn't rub off of the, the sticker. And uh, it just wraps back around onto itself so you can read what's there for where that cable goes to. Um, generally speaking, your 12 volt cables are not gonna be big enough uh, or not as big as a Cat5 cable. So they may work, um, maybe not. Uh, one that I came across recently is a zip tie cable label. <clears throat> These ones are pretty slick because all you do is write on the plastic with a fine tip marker and then it literally just has a little zip tie tail on it that you cinch around the cable. And so then it doesn't matter what size the cable is, it just clamps right around it and there you go. So um, as far as cable management goes, especially at like your fuse block um, or you know anywhere that's, that is a junction for, for where you may be doing your wiring, put those cable labels on there so you can easily identify what something is and you don't have to spend too much time tracing that down. Anyway, just a, a useful tip there for being able to manage your cabling. This is my switch for outside, the outside uh, porch light. Um, I've only got two runs coming over right now, but uh, so I got, I got one fuse that feeds the porch light as well as my uh, water pump. And then this other line here that feeds, uh, at the moment feeds just one single run for um, some future wiring in the the back the tool shed area back of the trailer So right now there's nothing that's actually connected to that. It's all pre-wired But I uh, just wanted to give you guys a view of these junction boxes uh, How much they can come in handy um, in the future? I'm going to upgrade the wiring in this and get each one of these <clears throat> Individually wired up. So anyway, that's that view on there that you can take a look at for um, some options on your trailer All right, so now We've gone from the charge controller to some of the wiring, trailer wiring, distribution block, and we have this guy. What the heck is this guy doing up here? What is a multimeter doing hardwired into my trailer? So I've actually taken this apart and this wire here, I have soldered into the actual multimeter. Um, as far as the screw is concerned, I found a spot where there's no electrical behind it and screwed it directly into the trailer wall. Um, but yes, this multimeter right here feeds directly from either truck or trailer up to here and then back down to my distribution block. I do this because I can see exactly how much power I'm drawing from my charge controller or my batteries at the flip of a switch. Let's see if we can get the camera on there. So right now I'm drawing 0.4 amps from my lights and my, my USB adapters and whatnot. And I can see I can see exactly what's going on with my trailer. I, I plug in a fan, it pulls another amp. I plug in something else, it pulls another amp. I can see very quickly with a free multimeter how much power I'm drawing from my system another multimeter after it kicks on there you can see I'm using about 0.3 amps of solar power into my trailer right now whether that be charging the batteries or assisting to run the lights that I'm currently running right now it's it's one of those things that's it gives a lot of information for how much this system is actually drawing all right, one more quick note in regards to these multimeters. They run on 9 volt batteries, so you cannot leave them running all the time. Um, I have accidentally left them running overnight, and when I get back in, I'm like, oh crap, I forgot it was running there. And so I turn it off, and they will eventually run out. Um, I'm not 100% on if you get to a low voltage, if it'll give you the incorrect amperage reading. Um, that is a possibility. Uh, in a future video, I think what I'm going to do is take one of my 9 volt, 12 to 9 volt adapters and use power to tell me how much power I'm drawing. Um, it's kind of a catch-22 on that one, but when it comes to the 9 volt batteries that you may not always have to replace it with, um, 
it, it may be a trade-off for you. But anyway, just keep in mind that they are 9-volt batteries that are in there that uh, that can run out at some point. So I just wanted to give you that, that heads up if you wanted to do this particular hack for your trailer. All right, guys, we are down here at the battery section uh, for one of my batteries. I have this battery here. It's a 17-amp-hour battery. I also have over at the front of the trailer a 55-amp-hour battery. Uh, and so I'm wanting to show you guys this particular one because of its portability. Uh, I mentioned that this is going to get replaced. It's getting replaced with a 4-in-1 jumper pack that has the air compressor in it. So if you're out in the middle of nowhere and your tire is running low or... You're, you know, maybe you have a bike and it's running low. You just grab this guy, pull him out, has a built-in air compressor, go fill up your tire, and then be on your way. Um, another thing to this is that because it's a portable jumper pack, you can grab it, take it to another vehicle. If you don't have any jumper cables, you can use it to, to help somebody out. Just on my, my last trip, um, I actually had to, to help somebody jump their, uh, their Suburban. And luckily they had jumper cables because I haven't had mine in my truck for a little while. But uh, anyway, it's, it, you have a lot of options. If... All right, guys, that wraps it up for the charge controller and uh, the additional wiring and any additional little hacks you've got there. I do have a little bit more wiring on the trailer that I could go over um, if you'd like to see that. Um, definitely comment below if you're wanting to see me uh, explain a little bit more about a particular item in my wiring, uh, the charge controller, the panel setup, anything like that. Just let me know and uh, I can definitely fill you guys in on, on anything that you want that clarification on. Um, like and uh, subscribe to the channel and I will be putting out some more good information for your cargo trailer camper conversion. So we'll catch you guys next time.